Leeds International School, Form 2, First Term, English Literature, Lesson Number 6. And the lesson is Hyvatas Kano. We will take a look at, at the learning objectives of this lesson. Recognize poetry from a variety of cultures, languages and historic periods. And also to understand and appreciate poetry as a literary art form. Analyze the various elements of poetry such as diction, tone, form, genre, imagery, figures of speech, symbolism, theme, etc. Identify a variety of forms and genres of poetry from diverse cultures and historic periods such as haiku, sonnets, ballads, dramatic monologues, free verse, etc. And finally, to recognize the rhythms, metrics and other musical aspects of poetry. Now we will see about the poet. Henry Wordsworth Longfellow, born on February 27, 1807, Portland, Massachusetts. Died in March 24, 1882, Cambridge, Massachusetts. The most popular American poet in the 19th century, known for such works as The Song of Hiawatha in 1855 and Paul Rivers Ride in 1863. Let's read the poem. Give me of your bark, O birch tree, of your yellow bank, O birch tree. Growing by the rushing river, tall and stately in the valley. I am a light canoe will build me, build a swift chimon for sailing, that shall float upon the river, like a yellow leaf in autumn, like a yellow water lily. And the tree with all its branches, rustled in the breeze of morning, saying with a sigh of patience, Take my cloak, O Hyvatha, with his knife the tree he girded, just beneath its lowest branches, just above the roots, he cut it, till the sap came oozing outward, down the trunk from the top to bottom, sheer he cleft the bark asunder, with a wooden wedge he raised it, stripped it from the trunk unbroken, give me your boughs, O cedar, of your strong and pliant branches, my canoe to make more steady, make more strong and firm beneath me. Now here, uh, you can see this is a very lengthy poem and the poet has used the dialogue forms. So all the trees are personified in this poem and this person Hayvatta is having a dialogue with these trees. So you can see the birch tree. The Haivat is asking a help from the birch tree to make a canoe. And also the trees are giving very funny replies. It's like this. Take my cloak, O Haivat, with his knife, the tree he girdled. And the tree of Sedar is also giving the help to Haivat by giving the plant branches to make the canoe more steady and strong. So this poem is full of visual imaginations and personification. Through the summit of the cedar went a sound, a crying of horror, went a murmur of resistance, but it whispered bending downward, Take my bows, O Haivatta, down, he heaved the bows of Sedar, shaped them straight away to a framework. Like two bows he formed and shaped them, like two bendent bows together. Give me of your roots, O tamarack, of your fibrous roots, O large tree, my canoe to bind together, so to bind the ends together, that the water may not enter. 
that the water that the river may not wet me give me of your balm o fir tree of your balsam and your resin so to close the seams together that the water may not enter that the river may not wet me and the fir tree tall and somber sop through all its robes of darkness rattled like a shore with pebbles answered wailing answered weeping now this is the second part of the poem now here you can see some of the new trees the tree of cedar the tamarack tree and fir trees now these all trees are giving a helping hand to haivatta so uh, from the cedar tree haivatta is going to make two bows so he made two bows and formed and shaped them like two bendent bows together and large tree had given fibrous roots to bind the canoe together and fir trees are giving balms and resin to close the seams together so the water will not may enter inside the boat take my balm o haivatta and he took the tears of balsam give me of your quills o headhawk all your quills o the headhawk i will make a necklace of them make a girdle for my beauty and two stars to deck her bosom from a hollow tree the headhawk with his sleepy eyes look at him shot his shining quills like arrows saying with a drowsy murmur through the tangle of his whiskers take my quills o haivatta thus the birch canoe was builded in the valley by the river in the bosom of the forest and the forest's life was in it all its mystery and its magic all the lightness of the birch tree all the toughness of the cedar all the large supple snips and it floated on the river like a yellow leaf in autumn like a yellow water lily now this is the last part of the poem now uh, in the last stanza you can see the, uh, the canoe was already made so several trees has sacrificed their lives to make this canoe even the animal called headhog has given the quills all his quills to make a necklace for haivatta so uh, finally he was very happy because forest life was in it this ironically meant that all the trees has sacrificed their lives in order to make this canoe all the lightness of the birch tree all the toughness of the cedar and all the large supple snakes so because of that only it can floated on the water so uh, you can see here so many visual imaginations in this poem Haivatha's Kano is a very famous poem and it is considered as an epic poem written by Henry Wordsworth Longfellow and it was first published in 1855 the poem was loosely based on the legends of native american people in 1857 longfellow estimated that the work had sold 50000 copies the song is about the haivatta and his beloved wife minhaha it is set along the south shore of lake superior the poem was very popular but the critics did not like it composers and painters were inspired to create works based on the poem in 2005 television movie was based on the poem yes my dear children now the song of haivatta is really a nice poem and also uh, as i told you before it is can, can be considered as an epic poem so uh, this poem is a great poem 
and he wrote it well. Now, in this poem, Hiawatha is taken to the trees to help him to build a canoe. It is a long poem, but every word of it has its meaning. It says that Hiawatha was a legendary American Indian chief who established the Five Nations League. I think that this poem is telling us that Hiawatha is gathering the Five Nations League. The canoe could stand for their total powers and the river can be thought of as their road to victory. This poem has a very serious, excited, yet sometimes sad tone because the trees have to be stripped of some of their parts. I think that it is filled with excitement because Hiawatha seems so eager to put together the canoe. The poem is very creative and Longfellow has Hiawatha get one part of the canoe from something different. So Hiawatha can make the best canoe to go down the river with. It's also quite an unbeat poem while having that touch of sadness from the trees. So, Hiawatha's childhood is an amazing childhood and he has so many supernatural abilities. Yes, what's that ability? Because Hiawatha can speak to, with the trees. So, all the trees are personified in the poem. Okay children, now we'll take a look at the poetic devices in the poem. Nature of the poem. What do you mean by the nature of the poem? Yes. It's the way that the author or the poet have written it. So the nature is all about the environment and the surroundings and the beauty of it. Yes, what do you mean by the tone? Tone is the writing expression, way of the poet. So the tone is mixed with the happiness and sadness both. What do you mean by theme? Yes. Theme means the general idea of the poem or a story. Yes, what we can say about the theme of this poem? It's all about nature. How nature wins. The next one is visual imagery. Yes, it's the imagination that we can um, made up in our mind. So there are so many visual imaginations inside this poem. You can see names of the trees are there, the beauty of the autumn is there, the beauty of the rivers are there. So, so many visual imaginations used by the poet. And the special thing is the personification. This is very important because this Haivata Kano, uh, the poem, is filled with a lot of personification. So, trees are uh, not lively things, but the poet has used as they are alive as humans. So, that is we simply called as a personification. So, the next one is metaphor. Yes, what do you mean by a metaphor? Metaphor is also a comparison between two objects and things, but we don't use the words like go as. And the next one is symbol. Other special symbols shows symbolism inside the poem. And the exaggeration is the next thing. So this is all about nature. So the Wordsworth has used so many exaggeration lines in the poem. So like a yellow leaf in autumn is an example for an exaggeration. Here, I have given you the examples and the poetic devices. So, this uh, song of Haivatta contains dialogue forms. For an example, give me of your bark, O birch tree. Give me of your yellow bark, O birch tree. Now, this was a uh, telling by the Haivatta to the trees. So it is like a dial. And the next one is personification. So the example is and the fir tree tall and somber sobbed through all its robes of darkness rattled like a show with pebbles 
answered wailing, answered weeping. Now, can a tree speak? Can't. But in poetry, the poets and the writers, they can uh, write as they are talking. So, the fir tree answered wailing and answered weeping. Yes. What about metaphors? He has forgotten the bitterness of anger. Anger is compared to the bitterness. So, in Hypatha's heart, an angry heart was beating. Yes, the heart is compared to an angry heart. So, uh, we can consider those things as metaphors. Next one is uh, simile. Simile uh, is a comparison between two things or objects with the words using like and as. So, there are two examples I have given you. Like a yellow leaf in autumn and like a yellow water lily. And the next one is symbols. So, the example is, give me of your balm or fir tree, of your balsam and your raisin. So, the symbols we can take it as, fir tree is giving balm, balsam and raisin. And the next one is repetition. Repetition means the repeating of same sentences, words or phrases. So, uh, the example is, just beneath its lowest branches, just above the roots he cut it. So here in this line you can see the words just is repeated several times in the poem. And the next one is very familiar as I told you before it is all about personification. What do you mean by personification? Yes, I told you that giving the human characteristics to non-living creatures or things. So the examples are over tree, large tree and fir tree. So, my dear children, we will take a look at the summary of the poem. So, uh, today we learned a very lengthy poem, but it's very nice and attractive poem. And it's uh, also a very famous poem. And it is also considered as an epic poem. Uh, why is that? Because uh, it has a legendary, it's all about a legendary Native American person. Right? So, the song of Haivatta is based on the legendary Native American hero, Haivatta, who performs brave and magical, isn't it? Yes. So, it's readable, lyrical, entertaining and the words are not really complex. You can read it well and the simple words are there. And still the poem is very popular among the readers of all ages. Right, now I have given you some questions. There are eight questions. I hope you can answer these questions well. The first one is, the song of Haivatta may be considered as a blank. Yes, you can write the uh, suitable answer for that. Second question, very easy. Who is Haivatta? Third one, what role does the world of nature play in the songs of Haivatta? Question number four, how many trees sacrifice their lives in order to make this camp? Question number five, quote all personification techniques from the poem. Question number six, what is the theme of the poem? Question number seven, what did the birch tree do? Last question, what did the fir tree do? Yes, take your time and answer those questions very well. Okay, dear children, now we have come to the end of the lesson. So, we discussed the summary, we discussed the poem. So, thank you very much for listening and have a nice day.